Well, good morning. I'm glad I have an audience here. It's nice to see you all. Thank you for coming out. Um, so uh, my task is in the next 40 minutes or so to go through in some detail exactly what we that's included in our document on the policy and guidelines governing appointments and promotions and professional activities. Uh, this, as has been said, will be emailed to all of you as well as will be on the website. So I th all the gory details will be there. And I'm but I'm going to try to hit most of the key elements of this. Thing. So the, the first point to emphasize is that this is just the start of the rollout of this process. Uh, this is going to take a while until we all learn the process, until you all become comfortable with it, and then ultimately uh, when you choose uh, which direction you all want to go with on your careers. So today we have these two town halls, um, the one we're sitting at at this moment in New Brunswick, and then there's one at noon in, in uh, Newark, if you want to drive up there and hear this again, Bob's going to give the presentation. Um, I don't know why you do that. Um, uh, we are also going to be coming to each school three times. Um, uh, and I'm going to get tired of this presentation pretty quickly, I think. So uh, we're going to talking to the faculty. Uh, we're going to we're going to clearly need to teach the schools appointments and promotions committee about how this all works, so that they're deeply familiar with it. And then we're going to spend time with each of the chairs and division chiefs at each of the schools as well, because they're obviously int intimately involved with the process. So let's go through uh, the key principles. It begins with a partnership, and this is a partnership between the university, RBHS, and the faculty. Because what we're trying to do, of course, is to create an exceptional faculty and exceptional university. We only do this together. Uh, this has to be done together. So the expectations from the universities are exceptional environments. And, you know, clearly we're working hard on improving infrastructure, having a culture of intellectual curiosity, critical mass of exceptional colleagues and trainees, mentoring, clear expectations and rules for success. And I think this document really lays them out pretty clearly. And a positive benefit of name recognition, which I think Rutgers clearly brings to the table. Now, the... the counter deal here from the faculty is that we ex we're we looking for exceptional achievement. And, and in all our different categories of investigation and clinical practice and teaching and community service. Uh, and, and each of you will have different emphasis on your careers, but we're looking for excellence, which is really the key part of what we're trying to emphasize. And then always a high standard of integrity and professionalism. So let's now go through the tracks and how this is all going to work. So there are five full-time tracks designed to assure, and you note here, the collective success of the faculty, because this is not about one person doing everything. This is about the faculty doing the totality of the effort. And each of you may do different things, but in, as a whole, we're going to be very strong if we all do each of those specific tasks well. So the tracks include the tenure track and then the non-tenure track. The non-tenure track includes what we call a teaching track, a clinical track, which has two pathways of a clinical scholar and a clinical educator, a professional practice track, which is definitely new uh, uh, to, to the schools, and then a research track. And I'm going to go through each of these in turn and explain how they work and what the differences may be. So there's some fundamental principles that underlie this. The first is that each track serves equally important but different functions. And this gets back to what I said a moment ago. We're looking for the totality of our effort, but we don't expect everyone to be able to do every single component of this well. But as a whole, we need to do it exceptionally well. The, to support that basic concept, there's no distinction in titles. So whether whichever track you're on, you get the same title because each of the activities that you're doing are, is very important to our total success. So it's a typical assistant professor, associate professor, professor, and including distinguished professor with a progressive portfolio of accomplishments in all tracks. Uh, switching between tracks is, we're, we're going to try to minimize this. So it's going to be an uncommon event and may occur only with approval. The new faculty may be hired as instructors and will have three years to be promoted and to select a track. Provosts will review the appointment letters for whether there is an adequate support and mentoring needed for the success of each of the faculty's mission. Please come in, sit down. I don't bite. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And I'm not asking questions today, so contrast my usual rounds. Okay. So tenure is only awarded on the tenure track, 
and there will be a formal tenure review no later than the ninth year. If unsuccessful, a one-year terminal appointment will be provided. Upon enactment of these guidelines, the current faculty tenure track will be given additional five years uh, to, to achieve tenure. Academic review is required for all reappointments. A distinguished professor is available for all tracks. And the emeritus professor uh, appro uh, uh, approval basically is, sim is identical to the Rutgers system, which does not really require the same in-depth formal review. Scholarship is required in all tracks except the professional practice track. And teaching is required in all tracks. And once again, I'll say this over and over again in this pre presentation, professionalism is a must for all of us, for all our faculty. So we have two uh, uh, entry uh, appointments, uh, tracks, uh, not tracks, appointment uh, titles. The first is what we call RBHS lecture. And these faculty are not assigned a track. They may not have completed a terminal degree, and they're working, often they will be working on a degree while serving as a part-time or a full-time teacher. This is a one to three year appointment, and they maintain the rack, rank up to nine years with a one year terminal appointment. Once the faculty member has a terminal degree, they may be promoted to either instructor or assistant professor in a track. The faculty can be part-time RBH lecture indefinitely. So people that are doing this long-term, part-time, can stay in that, maintain that title. The instructor is a slightly different, is once again, they're not assigned to a track, but this is new faculty up to three years with time to choose a career direction and track. An advanced degree or equivalent or completed training are eligible for both uh, board certification. So these are people that have completed their, their training, essentially, have got their advanced degree, um, they have one to three years, and by the end of that third year, they must meet the criteria for promotion to assistant professor on one of the full-time faculty tracks or receive a one-year terminal renewable, uh, non-renewable appointment, RBHS lecture. So the selection of tracks. They're determined at the time of the appointment by the department chair in consultation, of course, with the faculty, the dean, and the provost. And they're based on the obvious things of qualifications, career aspirations, and institutional need, availability of position, and funding to support that position. So let's begin now, in turn, to go through each of the tracks, and we'll start with the tenure track. So faculty in the tenure track will spend the majority of their time conducting research, at least some of which must be led by this faculty member. The Aries investigation uh, can span any of the multiple disciplines that relate to biomedical sciences. For example only, this could be clinical research, health services research, laboratory research, but many, many others, many others. And RBHS will endeavor to provide newly appointed faculty in the tenure track significant protected time, assignment of a mentor, and the appropriate startup funds to conduct their research. This is a, the tenure track faculty will receive a three year contract which can be renewed twice at three years after a formal review and at six years after a formal review. So both at three and six years, there is a formal review done to assess progress. They must achieve tenure within nine years, but may do so earlier. They may be promoted to associate professor without an award of tenure prior to nine years, but nine year limit to tenure still applies. They're able to stop the clock, able to stop the clock up to two years for family, parenting, and other special circumstances with approval of the chair, dean, and provost. Now, this does not apply the last, the terminal year of their appointment. Now, those who are awarded tenure are recognized as leaders in their scientific community. And there are lots of ways of measuring this, but some are listed here. High-impact peer-reviewed publications are an obvious one. Sustained and substantial peer-reviewed funding as a principal investigator. Now, this could be R01s, but there are lots of other equivalent awards that would be thought of in the same way. It's, we're looking for, for leaders, and therefore they could be officers in societies, membership in honor societies, members of editorial boards, scientific peer-reviewed committees, They'd be on national, international invited research presentations. They'd be invited for national, international, uh, rep they, and rep they'd have reputations attested by letters and the so-called arms length letters. So 
to be obvious, this can't be from your friends. This needs to be from an independent person, persons, who, who you don't have a personal relationship with um, and who can attest to the quality of your work. Everyone in this faculty is responsible to teach, and so we're looking for teaching excellence, and if these are uh, clinicians, then we, we're looking for clinical excellence, and then each of us has obligations to service and, and of course, professionalism. Now, the last statement talks about customarily tenure is granted at the time of promotion to associate professor. However, on occasion, an assistant professor on the tenure track may be promoted to associate professor after a minimum of four years as assistant professor without the concurrent award of tenure. So that's a brief description of the, uh, of the tenure track. All the details are in the document that you'll have emailed to you uh, later today. So let's now turn to the teaching track. The teaching track is involves, we're looking for faculty who are education leaders. They have evidence of outstanding contributions to teaching. Public, and this includes publication of teaching methods and materials, creation of outstanding continuing education and teaching programs. They need to assemble, maintain, and update an educator's portfolio dossier, which includes regional national recognized scholarship for their educational accomplishments, but they also may publish on non-educational topics that relate to their, their, their content expertise. Their published peer-reviewed papers are on education textbooks. They're invited to speak, and they're a member, they have memberships in program review or accreditation committees and similar activities. Most of these people will involve some clinical activities, and so they should have excellence in patient care. Some will be administrators and excellence in administration if applicable. And there we go again, professionalism once again, um, something we can't emphasize enough. That's the teaching track. So let's now turn to the clinical track. So the clinical track is composed of people who most of their time, imagine this is spent doing clinical activities. But scholarship is required in this track, and there's a, two pathways that are described, uh, and they vary by the scholarship requirements, the clinical scholar pathway and the clinical educator pathway, which I'll describe in the next slides. Administrators can be in either one of these pathways but scholarship, once again, is required. Now, there, we have lots of faculty that are not clinical, but we have people that are working on, on research projects that maybe are not in tenure track, but doing clinically oriented research. And these non-clinicians who spend most of their time doing collaborative role uh, supporting research would also fit into this track. Uh, we're looking, of course, for teaching excellence, service, and professionalism. Now, the clinical track, clinical scholar pathway, here are the scholarship requirements. They will participate in team research and funded research as a significant contributor. They need to have substantial authorship or significant publications and recognition outside of the institution. In contrast to the tenure track, they must make independent contributions with a clear theme, but need not be the leader and driving force behind this research. And then once again, it's all kinds of research, all types of research. The clinical educator pathway requires nationally recognized scholarship, including things like reviews, textbook chapters, case series reports, published uh, practice guidelines, or other examples of scholarly contributions. But there is not a research requirement in the clinician educator pathway. Next, professional practice track. This track is for faculty who excel in the areas of patient care and education. They need to have teaching excellence. If they're involved with administration, then excellence there as well. We go back to the old professionalism, and reappointment re re is contingent upon continuing need for the position, a positive formal evaluation, and the available funding to support the position. The promotion criteria for the professional practice and track includes clinical excellence. So some examples that illustrate that are we're looking for outstanding clinicians in their respective fields. They may, for example, receive referrals, uh, if it's applicable, of challenging clinical problems or have unique clinical expertise. The clinical care is regarded as outstanding. And this is based upon opinions of our senior faculty, other physicians in the community, or other health professionals and trainees. We're looking for these people to have excellence in teaching. And this can take many forms, but could include the curriculum and course development, teaching students, residents, and fellows, um, 
Certainly an, an, an indication of teaching excellence is being part of the Master Educators Guild and other teaching awards. And they're asked to speak on various topics, so invited lectures. The professional practice promotion criteria does not require, does not require, but certainly is strongly encouraged and will be considered in promotional decisions, scholarship. It's expected to provide a supportive role in clinical research. So this includes helping to enroll patients in clinical trials or at least facilitating the enrollment of patients in trials, interpretation of images or anatomic samples in clinical research, and similar sorts of activities. Achievement needs to be documented, although may not rise to the level of recognized as co-authorship. They need to provide some service to our medical centers, university, and community. This might include administration of applicable service on committees, clinical laboratory programs, community service activities beyond that done as part of their normal funded faculty roles. The professional practice track. So now let's move next to our last track, which is the research track. The research track is for faculty involved with basic or applied research. The primary focus is to facilitate and support the overall research mission rather than to develop independent research programs. They typically will conduct research in collaboration with other investigators, and they provide the experience, expertise, and leadership needed to efficiently run core laboratories and laboratories, including clinical laboratories, of funded research. Their teaching responsibilities are primarily related to their work on research practice uh, research projects. The criteria for promotion includes investigation scholarly accomplishments, which includes the usual authorship of original publications in peer-reviewed journals, significant intellectual contributions, but are not expected to have been the initiated and led the research effort, contributions to extramural peer funding, and evaluation of unique intellectual contributions by senior authors of their papers and grants. They need to have evidence for regional and national recognition. This includes invitations to speaker or visiting professor, membership in positions of leadership in professional societies, editorial boards, membership or editorial review assignments, consultative positions with various government and private agencies, and organizer of national, of regional, national, and international meetings. Teaching including mentoring in the research laboratory of health professional schools, hospital departments, division programs, or university activities would also be part of the criteria for promotion. Service, service is not an obligatory and is considered as an infrequent event, but may be considered as a positive factor in the promotion. And then once again, professionals. That's the research track. So those are the, the, the tracks that, that we are going to be working with. And I think that they represent uh, the broad spectrum of skills and interests of our faculty, and I'm confident each of you will be able to find a track that, that works for you. So now let's talk next about the transfer between tracks. And this was, uh, Karen alluded to this, but I'm going to go through this in a little more detail, a little slower. So if we take a number of situations, it begins to faculty who transfer from the non-tenure to the tenure track. This may occur up to three years after appointment or promotion to assistant professor. The tenure clock is nine years from the initial appointment or promotion to assistant professor, but we add one additional year to account for the lack of protected time during those initial three years. A transfer at associate professor or higher level only under exceptional circumstances. If that was to happen, they'd have four years to achieve tenure. Second scenario is tenure, transfer from a tenure to a non-tenure track in extremely unusual circumstances. It may occur up to three years after the initial appointment as assistant professor. The transfer to associate professor or higher only under exceptional circumstances. Next scenario is transfers within the non-tenure tracks may occur at the assistant professor level and transfer at associate professor or higher only under exceptional circumstances. Now, all these transfers will come at the end of the day with a letter of understanding that outlines the terms of employment, the expectations, and evaluation signed by the faculty member, chair, and the dean of your school. All right, so those are the, uh, the, 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 the way we're planning to do the transfer of tracks. So the last issue, next close to the last issue, is the transition period to new guidelines. Prior to June 30th of 2016, faculty may select one of the, of the five tracks. 
The selection of one of the non-tenure tracks requires approval by the department chair and the dean. The transfer into the selection of a tenure track requires the approval of the provost and chancellor as well. Faculty members who have tenure uh, on the effective date of these policies will continue to be tenured at Rutgers as per their initial award. All non-tenure faculty will be required to affirm in writing the track that they choose. Faculty, we provided a letter outlining the track descriptions, the promotion criteria, and their list of responsibilities and applicable the responsibilities of the institution. This letter will be signed by the chair, dean, and faculty member and sent to the union. Faculty remaining in the tenure track. Assistant professors appointed nine years uh, before enactment of these guidelines must be considered for tenure within five years, so they have an extra five years. Assistant professors appointed less than nine years before enactment of these guidelines will have five years plus the difference in time remaining between the years lapsed since the appointment as the assistant professor. RBH instructor, these are folks with terminal degree. These faculty will terminal degrees must be considered for promotion to assistant professor within three years or given a terminal one-year contract. RBHS lecturer, these are faculty without terminal degrees. These faculty will have up to nine years from their enactment of these guidelines to obtain a terminal degree. They must be promoted to RBHS instructor or assistant professor or given a terminal year, one-year contract. Last slide. So all this requires bylaw changes. So the schools should draft new bylaws incorporating these guidelines to meet their local needs. School-specific criteria may be adapted to provide clarity to specific local circumstances in your school. However, I reinforce that the criteria delineated in these guidelines will be applied by the university as the minimum standards for decisions and appointments, promotions, and tenure decisions. So that's the end of my presentation, and we'll be happy to take questions. Thank you very much.